Hi everyone, welcome to STEM Zebra. My name is Tejas Rakshi. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the topic of trigonometry. Uh, it's going to be a, a basic overview of the theory of trigonometry. And we're gonna have vectors as our follow-up topic and, and physics applications in mind. So, uh, you know, everything we're gonna study is gonna be uh, more suitable for a physics course. This is like a review. Uh, this is a part of our high school physics course. Um, and after today's theory lesson, I'll do a separate problem solving lessons. So uh, if you watched my previous video, like an introduction of, of this physics course, I explained that I've divided uh, our course into three groups, every topic in three groups. A no math introduction, uh, a theory session, which is what we're gonna do today, and then a problem solving session. Uh, now, if you haven't visited our website, I highly encourage you to do so. It's www.stemzebra.org. Let me write it down. Uh, stemzebra.org. <clears throat> and uh, there is a tab there called high school physics and that's where all the course material for this high school physics course is kept uh, so i have links to all these videos uh, they're posted on youtube but the links are on the web page and any other supplementary material it's all there posted in an organized fashion okay uh, let's get started <laughs> let's uh, start talking about trigonometry uh, before we learn trigonometry now, many of you might have already learned trigonometry, but maybe some of you haven't. And even if you have, this will be like a review for you. But even to get that discussion started, you have to remember uh, a few things about angles and triangles. And that's how we're gonna start. So uh, let me write that down here. <clears throat> so we're gonna start with angles, then Briefly, we'll talk about triangles and mostly right angle triangles and then trigonometry. Okay. Okay, so then let's start our discussion with angles. What is an angle? Um, sure, if you think about an angle, you think of something like this. Right, two line segments and between them is this is this angle. Uh, so I would like to think about it as a, a slightly broader definition, which is uh, angle is more like a measure of uh, change in direction. So it's like it's like this: it's change in direction. And it's true that when these two line segments meet here they form an angle between them. But if you think about them as two directions, say this direction and that direction, then you say, okay, well, how did, how did it change from one to the other? So maybe it was this before and then it changed and became that. So that change in the direction is the angle between them. This definition is a little bit broader than just what you intuitively think about as an angle because what if you say that, well, the direction changed from here to here, but it didn't go like, didn't go like this, it went like that. So then you're talking about this outside angle, not the inside angle. Uh, what about a case like this, where you are facing one direction and then you turn around 
and in you facing the other direction. Uh, is this an angle? Uh, by just traditional common sense definition, you would say, well, there's no angle here, it's a straight line, or at least it would be straight if I had drawn it straight, so just imagine that. So you, it doesn't look like there is any angle at all, right? It's just a straight line. But because we're talking about direction, it was one direction here, and then we flipped it and went the other way, so there is that direction. So this is what we call 180 degree, right? That's a common term. When people say, you know, someone did a 180 degree turn means yeah, they, they had one opinion and then they completely changed their opinion and went the other way. That's called a 180 degree turn. So uh, this is this definition will more make more sense when you start talking about physics as well, because a lot of things in physics have direction and we're gonna talk about vectors. Remember, that's our next topic. So vectors have directions as well. So this definition makes sense. Uh, so what are some of the common angles? Let's list them. Most of you probably know what they are, but let's list them anyway. Um, I'm gonna draw kind of two axes here and then uh, draw the angle that we're interested in. So let's see. This is what we call a 90 degree angle. This, the example that I just gave of, of doing a 180 degree turn, this here is a 180 degree angle. Similarly, um, if you if you measure this this uh, angle that's greater than 180 degrees, so instead of the inside angle, you'd measure this outside angle. This is 270 degree. And similarly, you can say the whole circle, look like this. The whole circle is 360 degree. Right? This is also a common term. 360 degree means all around. So in this case, you can say that you started off with one one direction and then you went all around and then you ended up facing the same direction again. That's the 360 degree turn. Now we've been talking about degree, right? So all of these, they are in uh, this, the unit is degree. And you'll remember, you'll, you'll notice that we put a little circle here when there's this degree. So it's like, look like that. So you, if, you're, if you're writing it, you should remember to put that little circle. So that'll tell you that you're using degree as a unit. Now there's another unit which is uh, considered more scientific and in physics and in math, it's quite common. It's called radian. And I don't know if you have studied this or not, so let's do a quick review. In radian, um, now this time I'm going to be a little bit smarter and just draw all of these up front. And this angle is going to be pi divided by 2. And here there's no degree, there's no circle here. Sometimes you'll notice that uh, there's a C here for radian, but a lot of times this is missing. There's, there's nothing at all. Okay, so pi over 2, uh, this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, and full circle is 2 pi. This is the radian unit. Uh, if you're using a calculator, uh, I'm sorry, there's a little glare here. Um, try to reposition my camera a little bit. Okay, so uh, if you're using a calculator, either uh, it's generally a scientific calculator. So there you have to be careful because uh, you might think you're using uh, say degree but the settings are for radian in that case you have to change the, the setting and uh, change the unit to make it wh whichever one you want to use whether it's radian or degree 
Okay, so be careful if you're using a calculator. A lot of students make this mistake. I've seen this quite a bit. Uh, so you might wonder, what is this random radian business, right? Why, why have it this way? So I'm not going to talk in detail about why radian is actually a more scientific way of representing angles. But it's just that uh, the, the way this angle radian is defined is you uh, find out what the... Um, so I'll just give you an example, okay? So for a circle, the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. Hopefully you remember this. And the radius is r. So the definition of angle is this length of, of the arc, or in this case, is the whole circumference. This divided by the radius, which is r. So this becomes 2 pi. If, uh, if my angle was this, then this arc length would have been uh, pi r over 2 divided by this uh, radius which is r equals pi over 2 this is the, this is what we got here okay so this is where the definition comes from but we're not going to talk in detail about the definition or uh, or why it's useful okay so these are some of the basics of angles there are a few more things uh, i highly recommend if you don't quite remember some of the things in your geometry whenever you take the geometry course um, please review it right there are a few things that are, you you'll be expected to know i'll give you an example right these opposite angles you remember this this angle equals that angle so these kind of things will be um, helpful let me move the pad a little bit so you can see what i'm writing So these kind of things will be important. Um, another thing is that, say, if you have um, a line, uh, then this angle plus this angle is 180 degree. Right? These kind of things from geometry, uh, you should go and review if you don't, if you think you don't remember. Okay. So. Um, Let's start talking about triangles. I think now is a good time to do that. So let's start talking about triangles. And we're not going to talk about uh, all you know, possible forms of triangles and in-depth discussion about that. But instead, we will um, focus on uh, a few general properties of triangles and mainly right-angle triangles. So there are a few important properties of triangle. I'm just going to list the most critical ones here, okay? The f first one is, or actually there's no order as such, it's not like the first one, it's just one important property, is that uh, the, the internal angles, the, the three angles, right? That's why it's called a triangle. They all add up to be 180 degree, right? So if this is, uh, what do you want to call this thing? Like, alpha, beta, gamma, something like that, then alpha plus beta plus gamma equals 180 degree. Okay, extremely uh, useful property of, um, of a triangle. And I made a little demo for you here, and I'm going to show you in a second. So uh, I'm going to need a different uh, colored background, and you'll realize why. And here I cut a little um got a little piece of uh, paper in a triangle shape and it's kind of a random randomly cut triangle so it's not like i measured anything there hopefully you can see the through the glare okay so it's a triangle and these are the three angles so they three combined should add up to 180 degree uh, how do we show that we can show it like this so i'm going to take this and I'm going to cut these corners. Now, I've already marked the where the corner is, so I don't forget after cutting. So I'm going to cut these. Okay, so first corner. Second corner. And third corner. I'm going to put them together. Let's see what happens.
Look at that. They form a perfect line, right? They'll always do that, no matter what the shape or the size of the triangle is. They'll always add up to 180 degree. Remember, 180 degree means a, a straight line, basically, right? And that's what it's doing. That's what it's adding up to. Uh, so, cool, that's, that's from my demo. I'm gonna remove this from here. Got a little smear. Okay, so that's one property. Um, how about the Pythagorean theorem? Hopefully you remember this, but if not, it's here. So a right angle, a right angled triangle, or sometimes it's just called a right triangle, but I like to call it right angle triangle, is a triangle where one angle is 90 degree. So this is 90 degree. Okay. And then let's call this angle alpha and this beta. Why alpha and beta? They're Greek letters. They're just traditionally uh, in, in science and mathematics, they're used as angles. They're also used as many other things. But alpha, beta, theta, they're quite common. They're used for angles. So I got alpha and I got beta, right? This could be different, alpha and beta could be different, but this angle is 90. That is the definition of a right angle triangle. So what does that mean? Um, if all three combined is 100, uh, they're 180, but this alone is 90, what does it mean for the rest of the two? These two combined should also be 90 right? These combined would be 90, then you add this 90 to it, you'll get 180 degrees. So alpha plus beta plus this 90 degree should be 180. And you you, remove, you, know, you move 90 to the other side, you subtract 90 from both sides. Uh, so you get alpha plus beta equals 90 degrees. Extremely useful property. Um, it's kind of at the core of uh, the trigonometry that we're going to study. Okay, so in fact, it means that alpha equals 90, uh, or actually I should put it the other way around, uh, beta equals 90, 90 degree minus alpha. So when, as far as the angles are concerned, as far as the angles are concerned, you only need to know one alpha for a right angle triangle, right? If I told you that, hey, there is a right angle triangle, this triangle is a right angle triangle. And I gave you one angle, one of the two non 90 degree angles. Uh, that, angle is, uh, that angle is alpha. Then I know beta because beta is 90 minus alpha and the third angle is 90. So I know all three angles. So the, the, the only variable becomes this one angle alpha, okay? So that's another property. That's like the, the second property. Uh, again, there's really no one, two, three here. I'm just writing it as that way to make it easier to track. Uh, and the third one, also extremely important, is, and it's not just for triangles, okay? It's pretty much for all shapes, so rectangles or whatever, uh, any polygons. If you, <coughs> excuse me, if you enlarge a shape, so let's say you, enlarge a triangle. If you do that, the angles don't change. We're not gonna look at any formal proof here, but this is kind of common sense, right? The, the, if you enlarge something, the only Things that change are the size. The size changes, the length of the sides change, but the angles don't change. Here, uh, I have a little example and I'll also um, put this here in front of you. I got two triangles. Uh, by the way, they're called similar triangles when the triangles are of the same shape, meaning the angles are the same, but the sizes are different. So here they are, two of them. One is bigger than the other. But if you look at, if you place the angles on top of each other, you'll see that it's kind of hard to see because the color is blending, white, two whites are blending. 
but this angle is the same as that angle and uh, this angle is the same as that angle and this th third one of course is a 90 degree angle so the the, the angles match okay this property um uh, here i smeared it again um this property is also at the core of the trigonometry that we we're going to study um, okay i'm going to rewrite this okay so the angles don't change meaning all the sides scale uniformly okay so all this is actually the definition of enlarging is you scale all the sides all sides scale uniformly but the angles don't change uh, so let me uh, erase this now and i'm running out of space and, and draw another uh, uh, draw another picture okay to to make this point clear let's say i have one right angle triangle here and this angle is alpha uh, but i also know the sides so let's call this a it's called b and it's called c So this angle is alpha, so you know that uh, this angle is 90 degree, this angle should be 90 minus alpha. Uh, how about if I have another triangle, which is bigger um, here. So it's a bigger triangle, but this angle is still alpha. Uh, this side, this, uh, this angle is 90 degree, this must also be 90 minus alpha. And let's say that uh, this, side let's pretend it's double okay i know in the picture it doesn't look quite double but let's just pretend so if it, this is 2a then this is going to be 2b and this is going to be 2c okay so what happens then the ratios don't change ratios the ratios of sides don't change in this case uh the ratio of this this base divided by this long side which is a divided by c in this case it's this base which is 2a divided by this long side um, by the way this that long side is called hypotenuse so we'll talk about that in a minute this is two it's 2c so 2a divided by 2c is the same as a divided by c so this ratio hasn't changed similarly this this vertical side here is uh, b divided by uh, th this divided by the long side is b divided by c similarly here is do 2b divided by 2c vertical side divided by the long side is 2d 2b divided by 2c which is again b divided by c so this ratio again has not changed okay so in fact you can have th th another pair right you can have this a divided by b and here is the same thing this ratio hasn't changed again Okay, so the ratios do not change. That's kind of the implication of what we said uh, in the um, uh, in in my you know what I was talking about a minute ago that the angles don't change, but the sides scale uniformly. And this is the implication of that: that for this angle alpha, all the ratios are going to remain the same. By the way, there is one more important thing about angles that I didn't talk about earlier and I'll, I'll write that here make a little separate box here which is Pythagorean theorem for a right angle triangle a b c c square equals a square plus b square okay uh, popular theorem uh, we'll use it quite a bit in our study of trigonometry okay so now uh, we have found some interesting properties of uh, right angle triangles and triangles in general let's see if we can use them to formulate our, our trigonometry principles so i'll erase this and now we're going to start talking about actual trigonometry
I'll draw that same triangle again. Uh, a, B, and C, and this angle we'll call it. Uh, we'll continue with our notation of alpha. Okay, I'll add it in here. Alpha. Okay, so what happens? Uh, what happens now? We talked about these ratios, right? So let's write down these ratios. Uh, these sides have another name, uh, like another set of names. And it goes like this, and you should definitely know what the, that set of names is. For this angle that I have marked here, for this angle, this side of the right angle, the one closest to it, the one attached to it, is called adjacent. So I'm just going to mark it as ADJ. It's adjacent. Okay. And this side that's opposite to it is literally it's called opposite. So it's, I'm just going to mark it as OPP. And the long side of the right angle triangle is called the hypotenuse. So I'm going to mark it as HYP. So clearly you can see that A is adjacent of, for alpha, uh, B is opposite for alpha, and C is the hypotenuse. Uh, now just a little thing I'll remind you later, but what about we, what, what if we were talking about this angle? If we were talking about that angle, then B is the adjacent and A is the opposite. C is, is always the hypotenuse, okay? So uh, then we said ratios. So now we're gonna define three extremely important and popular or notorious, whatever uh, you wanna call them, ratios of trigonometry. There are three of them. Three of them. They're called sine and it's just it's just written as sin uh, cosine it's written as cos and tangent it's written as uh, tan So these three, sine, cosine, tangent, these three are, I would say, probably the three most crucial uh, ratios or uh, just in terms of the evolution of trigonometry, these three have proven to be extremely important. Uh, and they're not independent. They depend, they, they depend on each other. Uh, so sine, and this, I'm going to write the definition here. Sine, you always say, this function or this ratio for this angle. So in this case, the angle is this alpha. Okay, for this angle, and you put it in parentheses, sine is uh, the opposite divided by hypotenuse, which in this case is B divided by C. Cosine or cos of alpha equals adjacent divided by hypotenuse uh, and in this case again it's a divided by c and tan of alpha equals the opposite divided by adjacent which in this case is b divided by a uh, in fact, you'll also realize that this equals sine divided by cosine because sine and cosine both have the C in the denominator. And if you do sine divided by cosine, all you get is B divided by A, which is B divided by A. So <clears throat> uh, this, is, this is really important, okay? So make sure you study this. Um, Evidently, there is a little um, acronym that I recently found out. It goes like this, um, S S O H so um, ka, and this is called um, DOA, because so it means sine equals opposite divided by hypotenuse, 
cosine equals adjacent divided by hypotenuse, tan equals opposite divided by adjacent. I had never heard of this until very recently. I think one of my students a year ago or something mentioned something like this. Um, but I, 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 I always just, I mean, you just understand what it is. I think that's that's more important. But I, yeah, sure, if this helps you, so katoa, so katoa. Sure, go ahead and memorize this one. Um, uh, there's also a, a a few really important properties that uh, um, I, I don't know if we're going to have time to go through the detailed properties of trigonometry, uh, but these three uh, are going to be used uh, quite a bit. Um, if you're whether you're taking physics or mathematics, you'll encounter them. Now, uh, you know what happens that once the alpha angle alpha is defined, the sine of, sine of that angle is known, no matter what the triangle shape is. So all the sines and cosines and tans are, are, are listed already, right? It's, it's not something you have to invent every single time. The, the, the numbers are already known in tables. So here, I'm gonna try to uh, import a table for sine. Uh, hopefully this will work. All right, hopefully in a few seconds, uh, you can see this table. Okay, there you go. Okay, I, I overlaid this on my screen. Uh, this is a table of, of sign. I, I guess what I, where I found it. Uh, I found it on NASA website. I mean, ooh, why would NASA put these tables out there? I don't know. Uh, maybe they want to help students or something. But you see that the angle starts at zero and goes all the way to 90. So um, this, in this little picture here uh, that I'm going to draw, uh, a zero angle is something you know close to small angle, and a, a large angle goes like this, right? So it starts with zero here and goes up this way to 90 degree. Here is 90 degree, and uh, you see some. There's some some really uh, useful ones that you should always remember. Sine of 30 degrees is 0.5. Uh, sine of 60 degree here is uh, square root of 3 divided by 2. It's 0.866. Quite important one. Another one that's really handy is uh, for sine of 45 degree is 1 divided by square root of 2 is um, uh, 0.707. And sine of 90 is 1. Okay. So let me get rid of this table so you can see this again okay so uh, I'm gonna erase this and and we can move on to our discussion uh, I'll, I'll repeat a few things as we go along okay so what are uh, a few interesting properties uh, of, uh, of these trigonometric ratios so I'm gonna draw this again a B C and this is the alpha angle uh, you'll notice that I said this earlier, uh, this angle is 90 degree minus alpha. So think about this. The adjacent for alpha, this is the adjacent, is the opposite of this other angle. Similarly, the opposite of alpha is the adjacent of this angle. So the adjacent and opposite flip rolls for these angles that are that, that their total is 90 degree so these flip the hypotenuse doesn't flip so what happens the cool thing that happens is sine of uh, alpha equals cosine of this other angle which is 90 degree minus alpha this other angle and similarly cosine of alpha equals sine of 90 degree minus alpha. So there's sines and cosines flip of these two angles. And tan of alpha becomes one divided by tan of 90 degree minus alpha. So their tans are inverses. Why? Because 
you see for, for tan of alpha, I'm just going to illustrate it here quickly. Tan of alpha is, what? what is it? It's opposite divided by adjacent. So it's B divided by A. And tan of 90 degree minus alpha is the, the opposite of this angle is A. So it's A divided by adjacent of this angle, which is B. So you see this, uh, this is B divided by A and this is A divided by B. So they're inverses of each other. Okay, uh, another important thing, and it comes from Pythagorean theorem. You remember Pythagorean theorem? I'm gonna write it here. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So what if you divide both sides by C squared? You get, um, I'm gonna divide this right here. Divide everything by C squared, you get uh, one equals C squared divided by C squared is one. Um, you get A divided by C squared plus B divided by C squared. So what is A divided by C? Remember, A divided by C is the cosine of alpha. And what is B divided by C? It's sine of alpha. So as a result, you get sine uh, sine of alpha square plus cosine alpha square equals one. Now here's a little trick you should remember. Uh, you don't normally write, write squares like that. Instead, you write sine square alpha. Okay, it's a weird notation, but it's very common. That's how it's used. Now, so this equals that, okay? And same thing here, cosine square alpha equals one. Now, I want you to be really, really careful when you write it, okay? Sine square alpha, which is what we wrote here, and sometimes there's no parentheses as well. Does not is not the same as when you write sine alpha square. Unfortunately, this notation is, is kind of messy. Uh, sine alpha square. So this equals sine alpha square. And this equals sine of alpha square. It's like you square the angle first and then you take the sine whatever that means. And here you take the sine first, then square it. So this is equal to that, this is equal to that, and clearly they're not equal, right? You square the sine, that's not the same as you take the sine of the square of an angle. So this notation is really important. You, you very rarely do this. I mean, very rarely will you square the angle, but you will square the sine. So that's going to be that, or or I, the, the way I wrote it, I wrote down here. This or that or that, right? That's how it's written. You can do sine alpha whole thing square, or sine square alpha, or sine square in parentheses alpha. Okay, so hopefully this is clear. I'm gonna take a little screenshot of this, and we can move on. So you might say, well, okay, well, you, we did all of this. What is it used for? What, what, what's the use of all of this, okay? So let's do a little example. I'll just show one little example, okay? We're gonna do problems and such later on. Um, let's say that um, uh, you wanna measure, um, there's a tree, okay? There's a tall tree. And you want to know what the height of the tree is. And it's kind of difficult to measure the height. Right? I mean, you have to walk up there and climb up there with a the tape or something. It's a tall one, so you can't really do that. So instead, what you do is you measure a horizontal distance of, uh, say, 10 meter. You measure this distance. And you stand here and you measure this angle. 
And by the way, to measure the angle, uh, you can use something like this. Um, you see, it, it uh, you have angles. I, I should be careful here. I don't want to end up writing on this. So the angle from zero, if you want to measure, if you're measuring from this side, it goes from zero, 10, 20, all the way to 90, right? This is 90 degree, and then all the way to 180 here. Uh, if you if you wanted to measure the other way, they also have it going the other way. It's the same thing. Um, and each each uh, this this big um, line here that's 10 degree, and you can see the 10 marked here. So you can use something like this to measure this angle. Okay, you're gonna. Um, well, let's let's do that actually. I, I I didn't mean to do it this way, but here why not? We can do it this way. So let's see approximately what is this angle. It's about uh, 30 degree, approximately. You see that? Yeah, approximately 30 degree. So then I say, okay, well, I, what I do know is that, so this, now I measured this 30 degree, and I know that, let's say the height of this uh, tree is H, and this length is L equals 10 meter. What I do know is that sine of 30 degree, I'm not putting parentheses here, okay? It's quite common to not put parentheses. Sine of 30 degree, or, or actually, sorry, I don't need sine here, I beg your pardon. Uh, I need tan, right? Tan of 30 degree, in this case, should be H divided by L, okay? so well, what is the tan of 30 degree? Let's find out. Right? We have our table uh, from uh, none other than NASA. So I'm going to import that table here. Um, here you go. Hopefully you can see this. What is tan of 30? This is a table of 10 angle. 30 degree is here, right? 30. Uh, tan is 0.5. 773. So this is 0 0.5773. So this is 0 0.5773. So, and I know that L equals 10 meter. So H equals L times 0.5773. And L is 10, so it's 10 times this, which is 5.773 meter. Okay, so that's the height of the tree. So you see, you didn't have to climb up the tree to measure the height. You use trigonometry to measure the height. This is a very um, kind of straightforward example. So we'll do some problems in my next session, and then you can uh, get a little bit more idea of how, uh, how, how trigonometry can be useful. It is extremely useful, by the way. The, Pretty much every field of mathematics has trigonometry built into it in some way or some form. Okay, so I want to quickly do one other thing uh, before you start falling asleep, or I don't know, maybe you're already falling asleep. So, another thing, okay, one little modification of trigonometry we, we got to do. So, we have been talking about right angle triangles so far, right? But you don't have to do that, okay? You don't have to be tied to a right angle triangle. You can define trigonometry slightly differently, okay? And that actually is extremely useful. So I'm going to draw a, uh, this is usual x and y axis, right? Remember, this is the x axis and this is the y axis. Uh, hopefully, you have seen this before and remember what this is, right? This is the zero origin, and this is the positive side, negative side, positive side, negative side. So this is the positive, positive, negative, negative. Uh, let's say that I had a point here on this graph, right? You, you've drawn graphs on this kind of thing. So let's say I had a point here. And the coordinates of this point were x and y, lowercase x and lowercase y. Now, remember this x, when I wrote this x, I got to be careful here when I write this. So this x means x-axis, right? It's not like an x number. Uh, 
Uh, same thing here, y means y-axis. And this point has coordinates x and y. What does it mean to have coordinates x and y? It means that if you draw a perpendicular here and then on the y-axis, this, this is x and this is y. That's what it means to have coordinates of x and y. Now, what if I drew this uh, line from the origin to that point? And let's say that the line length is r. And let's say that this angle is theta. Now we're using a different term, not alpha, but theta. Okay. It's written, written like this, theta. Now, hey, look at this. This is a, you formed a right angle triangle. In fact, you formed two right angle triangles. There's, there's one here and there's one here, right? Let me show you what I mean. This is a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle too. So can you see that for theta, uh, you can write these trigonometric ratios. You can say sine of theta equals opposite, which is this, right? Where my, where my pen is. This is the opposite, which is y. This is same as y, divided by hypotenuse, which is r. So this is equals y divided by r. And cosine theta, similarly, is adjacent, which is this x divided by this r. So this is x divided by r, right? Uh, by the way, what is r? I'm going to write that here. r, using Pythagorean theorem, r square equals x square plus y square. So in fact, so then you can write r as square root of x square plus y square. So that means sine of theta is y divided by square root of x square plus y square and cosine of theta is x divided by x square plus y square. What about tan of theta? This becomes extremely important as well. Tan of theta is this y divided by this x. Okay, opposite is y, uh, adjacent is x. So this is y divided by x. This is also called, do you remember what this is called? In your geometry or something, you must have studied this, right? Equation of line, this is called a slope. This is exactly what it is. Tan theta means the slope of that angle. As, as long as that angle is with respect to the x-axis, that is the slope. Okay? This is really important stuff. Uh, now, how about this? How about this? Uh, let me take a screenshot of this. You can extend this idea now to, uh, you don't even have to worry about the right angle anymore. All right, so you don't have to worry about right angle as well. So I'm gonna erase all of this and just draw. Now you can say, hey, instead of this r, uh, I'm going to actually have a circle of radius r. I'm going to have a circle of radius r. Okay. And then I don't even have to have this point here, which is commonly written. How about here? I can have this point here. And then my what's my angle? Okay, well, how about this to be my angle? Okay, and my, my radius is r. So, uh, well, what, this, this angle, let's call this angle theta now. 
So now what is, uh, let's say, what is sine of theta? The definition doesn't change actually. So the sine of uh, sine of theta is still y, the y coordinate of this, which is that. This is the y coordinate. Y divided by r. And remember, y is now negative. How about cosine? What happens to cosine? Cosine is still x divided by r. We saw this in uh, in my previous uh, uh, writing. It's x divided by r. Where is x in this picture? X is here. Right? That's the x-coordinate. X means x-coordinate of that point. X-coordinate is here. Y-coordinate is here. They're both negative. So sine and cosine are both negative. Now, if you had stuck to the right-angled triangle definition, you would have real trouble visualizing why sine and cosine could be negative. But if you use this definition, it's quite clear that because now you're defining it in terms of the x and y coordinates divided by this r, which is always positive, by the way, because this is the distance. Um, the, the Depending on which quadrant you are, sine and cosine can be positive or negative. Right? In fact, uh, if you look at sine first and then cosine, then they in this quadrant, if your point is in this quadrant, then they're both going to be uh, positive. In this quadrant, your sine continues to be positive. Why? Because uh, sine is dependent on on y y coordinate, and your y coordinate here is still positive. Up here is y coordinate is positive. So this is positive, and your cosine turns negative. Here they're both negative, and here. Um, Sine is negative, cosine is positive. So this, our convention is the first one is sine and the second one is cosine. And that's because of our x and y definition. There's also another way of looking at this, that x and y are the projections of this point. So x, x coordinate is the projection of this point on x axis. Y coordinate is the projection of this, this point on y axis. So they are also, uh, you can think about them as projections. Projections or x and y coordinates, x or y coordinates. So hopefully, uh, I feel like I've talked quite a bit today. Hopefully you have learned something new about trigonometry. Uh, we will do a problem solving session on trigonometry and then I'll start talking about vectors. And when we start talking about vectors, the things we learn in trigonometry are going to be uh, extremely useful there. So thank you for watching. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next time. Mm -hmm.